Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. Story number one, Giants of the Cosmos, written by Stumpy Jim. Landing down on planet Turka as a part of the diplomatic entourage to the home world of the Galactic Federation, Tarha was eager to be one of the first to learn the GF's history, politics, and culture, bringing that knowledge to the Senak people, his people. As the shuttle settled down and the ramp lowered, the whole delegation stepped off onto a grassy ground and were greeted by the Terex, a race of mammals covered in long, fiery red fur with five bright blue eyes. The Galactic Federation greets you into our grand community. The head of the Terex made a long, low bow. Raising his head, he waved a hand out to a slim, shining pod. This path shall take us to the Senate building, where you will be formally inducted into the Galactic Federation, and you can then explore it at your leisure. As the Sanak delegation settled into the craft, it jolted up and began whizzing through the air like lightning. After a few minutes of rushing towards the distant mountain, they eventually passed by it, and everyone's jaws dropped at seeing the monolith of metal and glass shooting up to the sky, of a design that seemed nothing like the design philosophy of the Terek. Not for its height, but for how as closer to the delegation was, the larger it seemed to become. After half an hour, the pod had finally landed in front of the titanic structure that seemed impossible to Utaha. It is truly amazing, isn't it? One of the Turek asked, noticing the Sanak's expression. Tarha was at a loss for words until he turned to a Turek. How did you do this? The Turek laughed and shook his head. I wish I could tell you, but my people weren't the ones to build it. Blinking in shock, Taha looked at the magnificent structure, then back at Turek. Then who did make this? As the delegation began to move, the Turek, talking, motioned for Taha to follow. My name is Go, the Turk began, bowing his head to Terha. I am Terha, Terha returned with a nod. Terha, Go began. This magnificent superstructure was built by an ancient and almost godlike species, known to the galaxy as uh, godlike, Terha mumbled to himself with a frown. But there are no gods, are there? Go chuckled. Correct, there are no real gods. He continued as the delegation stopped at a set of doors so dizzyingly large. It was a wonder how they even moved, but these beings, I hazard to say, are pretty close to it. What are they? Taha asked, his eyes darting to the titanic doors that opened without assistance. Well, we don't know what they are exactly, but we do know one thing. They are giants, Go said with a reverent tone, entering the massive foyer to the superstructure. Do you know the standard measurements of the GF? Taha frowned and thought. I believe I'm around twelve kernels tall. Yes, that sounds about right. Go nodded in affirmation. And I'm around eleven, making me shorter than you. Right, Taha nodded, wondering where this conversation was going. Well, you see, the average height of these giants is one hundred and thirty-three kernels tall. Go told, seeing the almost horrified expression on Taha's face. Yes, just over ten times either of our heights. How can something so possibly big even survive? Taha asked with panic. How have you survived all this time against such... such... things? Go laughed as the delegation entered an elevator. We've survived easy enough, and have even thrived by simply being in their proximity. Are they benevolent then? Taha gulped. No, Go said. Then seeing the terror in his new friend's eyes, he laughed and calmed him down. It's not like they're evil, but rather their motivations are odd and unpredictable, meaning that while one could just not even see us, another might just start killing with almost no provocation. Well, a third might give us a bountiful meal of their massive foods that could feed an entire city for a day. So benevolent is not the right sort of word for it. Taha stared at the ground for a long moment, moving with a delegation out of the corridor. Then, when a thought popped into his head, he turned to go. How long do these giants live for? So long that entire civilizations could be born, soar to the greatest heights, fall, and be erased from history. 
all within the span of one lifetime of a giant. Ghosts told, glancing at the look of smallness the races had experienced when coming to the Terrak homeworld. What's even more absurd is that in the time that you were born till you matured into adulthood would take one of their children to be conceived, gestate, and then be birthed. That's incredible, Taha shouted, surprising the delegates. He apologized and turned back to go. How long does it take for one to mature? Generations, Go said simply. Awed by the near impossibility of such a statement, Taha gulped, feeling terror set in even deeper than before. Then a grim thought came to him. They aren't still around, are they? Go halted and stroked his chin for a time, looking up at the colossal image on the wall, barely being able to see even the middle of it. I don't know. One day the giants had just left and we would never saw them again for millennia. If it weren't for the impeccable oral traditions and the superstructure, the modern Terek would have dismissed it as superstitious nonsense. But here we are. Taha couldn't argue with what he saw, his anxiety easing. But there have been many reports by various member species of the GF of encountering titanic space vehicles in the void, and occasionally the landing and disembarkation of a giant on various planets. Sometimes entire member species have disappeared off their homeworlds, with evidence of giants having been there, Go added. So, what would the GF do if the giants attacked? Taha asked, even though he already knew and dreaded the answer. Well, we would simply cease to exist, Go said with a shrug, but that would assume that they would see us as a possible threat. And uh, with how big they are, most conventional weapons would almost be nothing but a minor inconvenience. Exactly. What do they look like? Go pondered for a while, then spoke. Well, they are bipedal, mostly hairless with the exception of the top of their head, and sometimes their face. Their skin colors very greatly, but uh, from being pale as the clouds to being nearly as dark as coal, they appear very similar to primates with how their body is structured. Only the chin doesn't seem to jut out as much, not so hunched over, and they don't even have hands for feet. Five digits on each of their two hands and five on their feet. A species of cosmic giants roaming the void space, uncaring and maybe unknowing of the species it might destroy, Taha had said to himself, still struggling to wrap his head around everything that he'd heard. I never thought that I'd feel so small and weak after we had achieved FTL travel. Neither did we, Go agreed solemnly. But that is why the GF exists, so that we can all feel small together. End of story. Story number two. Curiosity Killed the Cat. Written by Random3x. Oh, I have a question, teacher. How did humans develop scientifically? The juvenile critic asked, holding up his arms eagerly. Kenna looked at the child that he had been hired to tutor and pursed his lips in thought. There are many ways to answer that question, Clix. Can you be a bit more specific? Um, Clix tapped his fingers against his chin, mimicking a gesture that he'd seen his teacher make when thinking. How about we start with engineering? Well, uh, we developed much like y'all people did. Starting with the basics. One rock on top of another and such. Then we progressed. Lots of trial and error got rid of what didn't work, and pushed forwards what did. Eventually, you get to the concrete jungle of today, Kenna answered. So you made concrete only recently? Clix asked. Oh no, we made that stuff millennia before we even understood rocket science, Kenna quickly answered. Millennia? Clix tilted his head in confusion. Yeah, some people just mixed stuff together just to see what would happen. I just kind of made it, Kenna explained. Was there no controlled method? Clix shouted in surprise. Not really. A lot of humanity steps were just us doing random things to see what happened. Kenner explained with a light shrug. But that is crazy. My daddy always told me why his sentients should never step forwards before knowing what is there. Clix puffed up his chest in pride, referencing his father. That is a valid method. A very safe one as well, but... Uh, Humans are, uh, well, uh, Kenner's voice trailed off as he searched for the right words. Humans are curious. Curious? Clicks repeated in confusion, 
tone, unfamiliar with the words. You're curious right now. It is just being eager to learn, Kenner explained. Oh, then I'm very curious in all things, but why does this make humans ignore danger? Crix asked. Well, uh, it is more our curiosity overrules our need to avoid danger. In some cases, we're even ignorant of the danger. Kenner answered. Like our explorers, there is a lot of danger in exploring unknown places. But countless people did it anyway. We are like the human homeworld's North and South Pole. Many explorers tried to reach them. Some even died. Died? Clicks repeated in shock. Yeah. We humans will ignore dangers just to sate our curiosity. Sometimes, though, we are ignorant of the dangers and press on anyway. Kenna replied with a nod. Oh, like what? Clicks asked eagerly, leaning forward. Well, take radiation. The scientists who discovered many radioactive materials didn't know that it was dangerous, because they were curious. They went out and identified lots of radioactive elements. And they live long, happy lives, uh, right? Fix asked. Uh, no. A lot of them died more than likely because of the radiation. One of them even had a notebook that has to be contained because it's radioactive, Kenner answered. But if they died... How did they satisfy their curiosity? Clicks asked. Well, they don't always die. Also, the ones that do almost always are the sort of that would be fine with dying in the pursuit of whatever it was. Finally, we have an old saying about this kind of stuff. Kenna paused and gently pushed Clicks back into his seat as the desk was beginning to tilt. Curiosity killed the cat. Kenna paused. Surely that dissuades curiosity? Clicks asked. It would, if it was the entire saying. The full saying is, curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back. End of story. I just quickly want to thank the Tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia Barkey, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albard and Gusta, Arcadian, Lord Azrakal, and Joe Kambaka.